Do you know which is the closest planet to Mars? It's Jupiter, the largest and heaviest of all the planets in our solar system. With a radius about 11 times that of Earth and a mass approximately 318 times greater, Jupiter is no small wonder. Unlike our home planet, which is rocky with a hard surface, Jupiter is a giant gas planet, primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter's surface is an artist's dream. Picture a beautifully woven tapestry of alternating reddish-brown and white bands. These bright areas, known as bands, and the darker ones referred to as stripes, are actually clouds of ammonia and ammonium sulfide. The bands reflect strong sunlight, while the stripes reflect less, creating a mesmerizing pattern that characterizes this gas giant. So the next time you look up at the night sky, remember that the closest neighbor to Mars is none other than the majestic Jupiter, a gas giant with a unique and mesmerizing surface. But Jupiter is not alone in its orbit. It is accompanied by as many as 80 known satellites, each with its unique characteristics. Let's start with Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon and indeed the largest satellite in our solar system. Ganymede's diameter stretches an impressive 5,265 kilometers, making it even larger than the planet Mercury. Its surface is a visual spectacle, partially covered with ice, reflecting light and giving it a radiant glow that is a sight to behold. And there's more to this icy moon. The Hubble Space Telescope has gifted us with stunning images of auroras, similar to our own northern and southern lights at both Jupiter and Ganymede's poles. These dazzling light displays are a result of charged particles interacting with the moon's magnetic fields, painting the sky with a celestial light show. Moving on, let's introduce Io, another of Jupiter's moons. But don't let its size, similar to our own moon, fool you. Io stands out for a very different reason. It's the most volcanically active body in our solar system. Its surface is a hotbed of volcanic activity, with frequent eruptions reshaping its landscape and ejecting plumes of material into space. It's a world constantly in flux, a stark contrast to the icy surface of Ganymede. And lastly, we have Europa, a moon that holds a tantalizing possibility. Scientists have suggested that beneath its icy exterior Europa might be home to subsurface oceans, and where there's water, there's the potential for life. While this is still a topic of ongoing research, the idea of oceans, and possibly life, on a moon of Jupiter adds another layer of intrigue to this already fascinating planetary system. From icy surfaces to volcanic activities and possible oceans, the satellites of Jupiter are as diverse and intriguing as the planet itself. So, what have we learned about Jupiter, the closest planet to Mars? Well, let's rewind a bit. We've discovered that Jupiter is not just a regular planet, it's a behemoth, with a radius about 11 times that of Earth, and a mass that's a staggering 318 times greater. It's the largest and heaviest planet in our solar system, and it's so dense that its value is closer to the Sun than to Earth. Unlike our rocky home, Jupiter is a gaseous giant, primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. The surface of Jupiter, or rather its upper atmosphere, is a tapestry of alternating reddish-brown and white bands. These bright and dark areas, known as bands and stripes respectively, are formed by the sunlight reflecting off the clouds of ammonia and ammonium sulfide that decorate Jupiter's atmosphere. But Jupiter isn't a solitary giant. It's accompanied by a host of unique satellites, no less than 80 that we know of. Among these, Ganymede stands out as the largest satellite in the solar system with a diameter that surpasses even the planet Mercury. Its icy surface reflects light, giving it a bright appearance. The Hubble Space Telescope has captured the spectacle of auroras at Ganymede's poles, much like the ones we have here on Earth, suggesting the presence of a magnetic field. And then there's Io and Europa, two other satellites of Jupiter, roughly the size of our moon. Io has earned the title of the most volcanically active body in the solar system, while Europa is the focus of much speculation due to the possibility of subsurface oceans, and dare we say it, life. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, with its array of fascinating satellites, truly is a celestial marvel worth exploring, and who knows, perhaps one day, we might discover even more secrets this gas giant and its satellites hold.
Have you ever wondered about the largest planet in our solar system? Yes, you guessed it right, it's Jupiter. This colossal celestial body dwarfs our Earth with a diameter 11 times greater, and let's not forget its massive weight, over 300 times that of our home planet. This astronomical heavyweight is the true Goliath of our solar system, a giant among its planetary peers. So, to put it simply, Jupiter is a giant among its planetary peers. To understand Jupiter's enormity, consider its distance from the Sun, a staggering 778 million kilometers. That's nearly five and a half times the distance from the Sun to our very own Earth. This enormous distance means that Jupiter takes a lengthy 11.86 years to complete a single orbit around the Sun. Yes, you heard it right. If you lived on Jupiter, you'd celebrate your birthday just once every almost 12 Earth years. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. While a year on Jupiter is quite long, a day is astonishingly short. Jupiter spins around its axis so swiftly that its day lasts a mere 0.41 Earth days. That's just under 10 hours. Can you imagine? The sun rises and sets on Jupiter more than twice within a single Earth day. Thus, a year on Jupiter is a marathon, not a sprint, while a day is over in the blink of an eye. Jupiter is not just massive and distant, but it also has a gravitational pull that's 2.36 times that of Earth. Let that sink in for a moment. Imagine weighing over double your current weight. That's what you'd experience if you could stand on Jupiter's surface. Speaking of its surface, it's a chilly place with temperatures dropping to a frigid negative 108 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure. But what's beneath this cold exterior? Well, Jupiter's internal structure is primarily made up of metallic hydrogen and helium, a composition quite different from our home planet. Now let's talk about its satellites. Jupiter has a whopping 79 of them, each with unique characteristics and orbits. This is more than any other planet in our solar system. So, from its intense gravity to its chilly temperatures and numerous satellites, Jupiter truly is a world of extremes. To wrap it up, Jupiter is a behemoth, dwarfing our Earth in every aspect. Its diameter is 11 times that of Earth, and it sits a staggering 778 million kilometers from the Sun. It takes almost 12 Earth years to complete one orbit, and its mass is an incredible 317 times ours. With a surface gravity over twice that of Earth's and a chilly negative 108 degrees Celsius surface temperature, Jupiter boasts 79 moons. In the end, Jupiter, our solar system's largest planet, remains a fascinating world of superlatives, waiting for us to explore and understand. Did you know, just like Saturn, our colossal neighbor Jupiter also boasts its own set of rings? Yes, you heard it right. Our knowledge of these elusive rings changed forever when the Voyager 1 spacecraft, on its audacious journey, discovered them as it approached Jupiter. Unlike the gleaming ice grains that form Saturn's famous rings, Jupiter's rings are largely made up of, believe it or not, dust. These rings may not be visible in small telescopes, but they are there nonetheless, faint and thin compared to Saturn's, yet holding a beauty all their own. From the outermost to the innermost, Jupiter's rings consist of four parts, the gossamer, divided into two parts, the main part, less than a hundred kilometers thick, and the innermost halo. So, even though they're less visible than Saturn's, Jupiter's rings hold their own unique charm, don't they? Now, let's dive deeper into the structure of these fascinating rings. Like a celestial ballet, Jupiter's rings are composed of four parts, each playing a crucial role in this cosmic dance. From the outermost to the innermost, we have the gossamer, the main part, and the innermost halo. The gossamer is actually composed of two parts, each subtly different from the other. Then we have the main part, a band less than 100 kilometers thick. This thinness adds to its faint appearance like a whisper in the void of space. And finally, the innermost halo, a ghostly presence that completes this ethereal ensemble. Each part of the ring system, from the delicate gossamer to the almost imperceptible halo, contributes to the overall mystery and beauty of Jupiter's rings. These rings may not be as visible as Saturn's, but they certainly hold their own charm and intrigue. In their structure, Jupiter's rings present a fascinating puzzle, wouldn't you agree? 
How does the planet's rapid rotation affect these rings you ask? Well let's delve into this fascinating phenomenon. Jupiter, the gas giant, has a rotation period of about 10 hours, outpacing all other planets in our solar system. This whirlwind speed imparts a distinctive bulge around Jupiter's equator. Now you might wonder, how does this relate to Jupiter's rings? The rapid rotation of the planet influences the characteristics of the rings. The centrifugal force resulting from this rapid rotation pushes matter outward from the center, affecting the distribution and movement of dust particles that make up the rings. Moreover, Jupiter's axis of rotation and the axis of its magnetic field are tilted by approximately 10 degrees. This tilt impacts the rings as well, influencing their orientation and behavior. So, Jupiter's swift rotation and magnetic field play a crucial role in shaping its rings, making them even more captivating. Have you ever wondered about the satellites of Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system? If so, you're in for a treat. Jupiter boasts a multitude of satellites, but the four largest ones, akin in size to our moon and the planet Mercury, hold our focus today. These were first discovered by the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, and are collectively referred to as the Galilean satellites. Much like our own moon, these satellites present the same face towards Jupiter as they orbit, a phenomenon known as tidal locking. Their rotation and orbital periods are in harmony, creating a celestial dance that's been ongoing for billions of years. From Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, to the volcanic landscapes of Io, the icy surfaces of Callisto and Europa, each of these moons holds unique and fascinating secrets. Now let's dive deeper into each of these fascinating moons and their unique characteristics. First up is Ganymede, the largest satellite in the solar system. This celestial giant, with a diameter exceeding 5,000 kilometers, is even larger than the planet Mercury. Ganymede's surface is a vast, icy expanse punctuated by numerous craters. These craters, particularly abundant in the darker regions, are silent witnesses to the moon's ancient past. The surface of Ganymede is a tapestry of light and dark terrains. The darker areas filled with more craters are thought to be the older terrain, while the brighter areas represent more recent geological activity. But Ganymede is not just a passive icy world. It is one of the few moons in the solar system known to possess a magnetic field, a testament to its active, dynamic nature. The interior of Ganymede is thought to house a complex structure, composed of a metallic core, an icy mantle, and a rocky mantle layered upon each other. Next, we travel to the most geologically active body in our solar system, Io. Welcome to Io, a satellite characterized by its vibrant colors and active volcanoes. Unlike many of its lunar siblings, Io bears few visible craters. This is not due to a lack of impact events but rather a testament to the satellite's hyperactive geology. It's a world in constant flux where newly formed craters are quickly swallowed up by the ceaseless churning of the surface. And what's behind this geological hustle and bustle? It's Jupiter's tidal forces. These forces cause Io to expand and contract both vertically and horizontally, generating frictional heat that fuels its extreme volcanic activity. The radiant hues that adorn Io's surface are not just for show. They are the result of sulfur and other compounds spewed from the volcano. Beneath this vibrant crust, Io is thought to consist of a core, a rocky mantle, and a crust of lava. Now we'll journey to a satellite frozen in time, Callisto. Step onto Callisto, a satellite marked by its icy surface and lack of geological activity. This frigid world is a blend of rock and ice, its cold interior preserving a surface that's a testament to cosmic impacts over the millennia. This frozen landscape is peppered with craters, silent witnesses to the satellite's history. Among these, Valhalla stands out, a scar on the surface leaving an indelible mark. Now let's glide over to Europa, another icy denizen of Jupiter's entourage. Unlike its sibling Callisto, Europa's surface is smooth, belying an active geological life beneath its icy shell. This activity is thought to be driven by Jupiter's tidal forces, the immense gravitational pull heating Europa's core, keeping the surface ice in a slow, eternal dance. And beneath this icy ballet, 
Scientists suspect a sea of liquid water, a tantalizing hint at possibilities yet unknown. And that concludes our journey through Jupiter's intriguing Galilean satellites. Until next time, keep looking up and keep wondering. Have you ever wondered what it's like to explore Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system? Our journey begins in the early 70s with an ambitious project by NASA, the Pioneer 10 mission. This marked a significant milestone in space exploration, as Pioneer 10 was the first spacecraft to reach the colossal gas giant Jupiter. Launched in 1972, the mission's objectives were as intriguing as they were challenging. Pioneer 10 was tasked with capturing the first close-up images of Jupiter, studying its intense magnetic field, and investigating its radiation environment. Despite the official end of the mission in 2006, Pioneer 10's journey did not stop there. It continues its silent voyage towards the outer region of our solar system, a mute testament to human curiosity and ingenuity. The Pioneer 10 mission paved the way for future exploration of Jupiter, setting a precedent for the missions that followed. This was just the beginning of our fascination with Jupiter, a fascination that continues to this day. Building on the success of Pioneer 10, NASA launched the Galileo mission in 1989. With a clear objective to delve deeper into the mysteries of Jupiter, Galileo embarked on its journey, equipped to survey the gas giant and its numerous moons. Over the course of eight years, Galileo made detailed observations, capturing the beauty and complexity of Jupiter and its celestial companions. The spacecraft revealed the intricate patterns of Jupiter's storm-filled atmosphere and the icy surfaces of its moons. But Galileo's journey wasn't infinite. In 2003, to prevent the potential contamination of Jupiter's moons, which may harbor life, NASA made the decision to plunge Galileo into the planet's thick atmosphere. A heroic end for a mission that had brought us closer than ever to understanding the largest planet in our solar system. The Galileo mission gave us a deeper understanding of Jupiter and its moons, providing data that scientists are still studying to this day. Fast forward to 2011, NASA launched Juno, a spacecraft that's currently orbiting Jupiter. Juno's mission is to delve deep into the secrets of this colossal gas giant. It's designed to peek beneath Jupiter's dense cloud cover and study its auroras to learn more about the planet's origins, structure, atmosphere, and magnetosphere. Juno's primary objective is to understand the formation and evolution of Jupiter. It's studying the planet's internal structure, peering beneath the thick clouds to get a glimpse of what lies beneath. Juno is also investigating Jupiter's magnetic field, which is 20 times stronger than Earth's, causing spectacular auroras at the planet's poles. Due to the weak sunlight on Jupiter, which is only 1 25th of the sunlight on Earth, Juno is equipped with large solar panels to generate enough power for its operations. These solar arrays are pivotal in keeping Juno powered as it orbits the gas giant. Juno continues to unravel the mysteries of Jupiter, providing invaluable data that's helping us understand the gas giant better. Different spacecraft require different fuels. Did you know that? Just like vehicles on Earth, the kind of fuel a spacecraft needs is largely determined by its mission. Solar panels, for instance, produce varying amounts of energy depending on their distance from the sun. Crafting a journey to the inner planets, closer to the sun than Earth, requires smaller solar arrays. The reason behind this is simple. These planets receive more sunlight, thus generating more power. On the flip side, spacecraft exploring outer planets like Jupiter need larger solar arrays. They are farther from the sun, receiving less sunlight and hence, less power. But what happens when a spacecraft is too remote to generate enough power from solar panels? Well, in these cases, we load them with nuclear cells, a reliable source of power even in the farthest reaches of our solar system. The exploration of Jupiter and other planets is a testament to human ingenuity, using the resources we have to journey beyond our world.